Yo dudes, what's up? This is Planet Keith, I'm Keith, and today is episode 10 of the weekly blog vlog thing review. Okay, Monday, as usual, nothing ever happens on Monday except I have my yoga class and I do shooting the monologue and editing it. Now, over on my other channel, Keith Cooks, <laughs> the successful channel, <laughs> I um, often get requests from people to do uh, the recipes. And I always have a look at them. Sometimes I do them, sometimes I don't. And sometimes I discover wonderful things that I'd never heard of before, but which now are part of my repertoire. So it's all good stuff. However, uh, a few months ago, a chap called Darren Beale requested Oxford John or Oxford Johns, um, which I'd never heard of, and I, I had a quick look up of what it was, and there's almost no information. So I just, I don't know, put it, put it to the back of my mind and forgot about it. And then last week, Darren popped up again. He says, how are you getting on with the Oxford John? Um, oh, that's a good, good sign. How are you getting on with the Oxford John? Early in the morning. Nah. Um, uh, well, uh, the fact is, how I was getting on was, uh, I'd put it to the back of my mind, it's fallen out the back, and it's, you know, under the sofa somewhere, maybe. So I had another look, and I, and I found a, an 18th century recipe. Now, <laughs> recipes written in the 18th century, or, you know, actually, any time before about the middle of the 20th century, are not like we understand recipes today. They, they don't give precise weights, measures, techniques, anything it's just a rough sketch which is okay but you know you're never never going to get whatever whatever the definitive is supposed to be um and especially not with an oxford john because hardly anybody knows what that is as far as i can tell it's collops of mutton now a collop is just a thin slice so it's not as exotic as it sounds and it's in a sauce which is uh, a, a beef stock um, it's thickened with uh, like a roux, but not made like a roux, you know, but it's, it's thickened with flour and water. Uh, it contains parsley, mace, lemon and uh, shallots. And that's basically it. And you just, you know, stew your collops till they're cooked in the sauce and then you serve them with some croutons, which I thought was a bit odd for the 18th century, but what do I know? I wasn't there, even though I looked like I might have been. Anyway, so the point is, on Tuesday, I kind of made it. I didn't have leg, it was supposed to be leg of lamb. I didn't have that. Uh, I had some lamb chops. So the, the collops were a lot thicker than they should have been, but I don't think it makes any difference. I mean, they were cooked, they were cooked longer. Um, but yeah, not a standout dish, Darren. I think the only way you can get me to cook that is to, um, get me down to Oxford, sit me down in front of a plate of Oxford John made by somebody who knows what it should be and see how we go from there. So, mm, sorry about that. A couple of food stories happened on Wednesday. One was the glorious news that Bell's Scotch Pies are now being stocked by M&S, or at least they're listed on the website. Now, I had a thing about Scotch Pies a couple of, well, about a month ago. And uh, as part of that, I did taste test a Bell's Scotch pie, and I gotta say, I wasn't it impressed. Maybe their version of Scotch pie is an acquired taste, because my version is fantastic, but I am biased. Now then, and the other story, and the other story was that top telly chef, Tom Kerridge, is opening a chippy in Harrods in that London. And as you might expect, the offering is gonna be a bit pricey, but 35 quid for fish and chips is pushing it really I think and then you you know, you don't just get fish and chips for that you also get tartar sauce <laughs> you get curry sauce and you get peas pudding yes you do which what the hell is that all about you never you, you just don't have peas pudding with fish and chips you have mushy peas curry sauce fine that is the new modern Everybody does it, and it actually works really well. Peas pudding, I love it, I love it, I love it, but not with fish and chips. In fact, I've never tried it with fish and chips. I can tell it won't be good. And just to reinforce the point here, our Tom is a southern boy, or southwestern boy, West Country lad, 
Um, and so he won't actually necessarily know about real food, even though he's a top chef with lots of Michelin stars. <laughs> Um, but he doesn't know about his mushy peas and his peas pudding because the pea offering, I've written this down, uh, I've written this down, I have a script. Minted peas replace the mushy chip chop variety. Oh no they don't. Uh, you are busted, you are so busted. That is just a nasty, terrible thing to do to a mushy pea or a garden pea or any kind of pea. And Thursday, Mrs. Planet was off because she had to work the previous Saturday, I think. Yeah, so a shopping we went, not normal shops, we went to the local farm shop, which is uh, Whiteley's, owned by the lovely Vicky and husband Bryn, and their dogs. <laughs> and we love going there because, it, well, it's just, it's on the edge of Pudsey, which is, you know, a little market town. But it's at the top of this huge valley, and that I think, you know, their farm is quite a big chunk of it. And it's just a glorious bit of, you know, sort of countryside in in an almost urban setting. And yeah, it's it's like it's less than two miles from here. So we like to go there and I just stand around looking mystified because I'm not, you know, I'm not the gardener. While Mrs. Planet goes around collecting everything that she wants to buy. And it's always a lot more than you expect. <laughs> Friday, a football story. The long-awaited Euro 2020 tournament kicked off in Rome. <laughs> See what I did there? Kicked off. And it's going to be interesting. It was always planned that this tournament wouldn't be based in, in one country, as they normally are, but it would, the venues would be spread out across about a dozen. Um, now, with uh, COVID and travel restrictions and everything, things are going to be a bit fluid, I think. Also on Friday, G7 talks began in, in Cornwall, um, which is about as far from anywhere as you can get in England. The authorities could be assured there won't be a lot of protesters making their way to the end of the peninsula. Sunday, big day, England's first game in the Euros, which was at two o'clock at Wembley against Croatia. Now, uh, Croatia have formed because they knocked us out of um, the World Cup last time uh, at the semi-final stage and we were very upset with them. <laughs> the pundits on the telly, they, they always dig up these mad facts. One is that England have never won their first game in the Euros tournament in, I think, 11 editions that they played in. Um, so, yeah, it didn't bode well. However, we did win, 1-0. It wasn't a, a thrilling match, but it was a match and, you know, it had a bit of an audience, 20,000 people. Um, so, yeah, good stuff. There'll be uh, quite a few footy stories in the next, well, two to four weeks, depending on how well we actually do. So that was my week. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and uh, see you next time. Ta-ra!